Welcome back everybody. Congratulations on finishing test number two. We're ready to move on to unit number three, uh, which is going to cover the section of the Old Testament that the Israelites referred to as the writings. If you remember correct, if you remember back from the beginning of the semester, the writings are the catch-all category of of the Old Testament. If it's not law and it's not prophets, then it's writings. Uh, what that means is that the writings are going to include a lot of different kinds of material. We've got wisdom literature, we've got poetry like the Book of Psalms, and we still have some more history books to talk about like we do with, uh, uh, with the Book of Chronicles, which I'm going to talk to you about for a few minutes today. So let's talk a little bit about Chronicles. I know you're used to me having a PowerPoint and doing some audio recordings over that. I've never had a PowerPoint for Chronicles and I probably never will because what I want to do with Chronicles is I want to just take a few minutes to compare it back to the Deuteromistic history also known as the former prophets. Hopefully you've done the reading by now and you will have noticed that a lot of the book of Chronicles feels an awful lot like the books of 1st and 2nd Samuel and 1st and 2nd Kings, and that's because they are. Scholars think that 1st uh, and 2nd Chronicles are based at least in part on 1st and 2nd Kings uh, and 1st and 2nd Samuel. And, and so the question is, well, why, why would we do that? Why do we have all these copies going on? Uh, why, why are we having two different versions of Israelite history? And this goes back to what's the purpose of the book in the Bible? The purpose of the former prophets was to answer the question, what went wrong? And so we answer the question by examining Israelite history. The book of Chronicles is going to examine history, but it's going to be examining history for a very different purpose. The purpose of the, of the book of Chronicles is to examine history and see how we can use it to move forward as a nation. Rather than paying attention to everything that went, went wrong, what can we use as a foundation to help us move forward as a, as a nation. Let's see if we can make a little bit more sense out of that here. Um, I want to highlight a couple of different things for you uh, from the readings today. Overall, I want you to think briefly about how you felt about David at the end of the former prophets. Now, a lot of you were not liking David so much. He was not quite the hero we usually think of him as, and we were very upset that it turned out he was a rapist because of what happens with him and Bathsheba. Okay, so think about that. Think about how you felt about David. Now think about how you felt about David after reading through the book of Chronicles. And Maybe you noticed a contrast, maybe you didn't, but just try to think about what you read about David from the book of Chronicles. Now, I know I didn't assign the whole book to you, but did you really notice anything negative about David in the book of Chronicles? Think about that for just a second. And if you noticed anything negative about David, there are a couple of stories here, and one, one in particular I want to point out. Um, we'll see how even it's not really that negative of a portrayal of David. Um, so the first story I, I, I want to call our attention to is going to be the succession of David, uh, of moving from David to Solomon and what happened there. Try to remember for a second what happened with uh, the transition from David to Solomon back in the books of First Kings. And in that story, hopefully what you remember is the way Solomon becomes king is basically by the prophet Nathan and his mom Bathsheba tricking the, the old geezer David into giving him the throne. And in the book of Chronicles, though, notice how Solomon takes the throne. There's a big public declaration 
that Solomon is going to become the new king of Israel. And you're going to find that in, uh, that's in 1 Chronicles, I believe that's in chapter 19 here. Hold on. Okay, so that's how, that story is actually in chapter 23. I made a mistake there. Um, we have this big announcement made by David publicly proclaiming Solomon to be king oh, to become king over all of Israel in 1 Chronicles chapter 23 prior to that prior to that is a discussion of the temple and how David says he lays the foundations for the temple or he makes the plans for the temple but Solomon actually builds it now compare that to what was going on in the foreign prophets. David is not allowed to build the temple because his reign is too violent. And Solomon gets almost, if not, he basically gets full credit for the temple. But here in 1 Chronicles, we're kind of sharing credit for the temple here between David and Solomon. 1 Chronicles is really trying to improve David's image here. Now, think about the worst possible story about David. And I'm sure you guys are going to come up with David and Bathsheba, which we talked about a lot. And I've already mentioned this video once. And we, we found out that uh, it's not just an affair. It's, it's the story of David raping Bathsheba. It's also the story of him uh, conspiring to commit murder. All kinds of awful things as a result of that story. Now think about how the version of David and Bathsheba went down in the book of Chronicles. Do you remember it? I hope the answer is no, you don't remember it because the story of David and Bathsheba is not found in the book of Chronicles. It's completely eliminated. Why would you do that? Well, a good reason for doing something like that might be to continue to rehabilitate David's image. So let's take a look at one other brief story here. Um, this comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 21. Let me remind you of this, of what happens here. I'll read you a little bit of it. Uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 21. Satan stood up against Israel and incited David to count the people of Israel. Um, then what happens is that David takes census over Israel. Now this is wrong. This goes against uh, this goes against uh, the, the Pentateuch. Uh, against the Pentateuch, it goes against Old Testament law. The Israelites were not supposed to take a census, and the reason why you would take a census is to find out how many men, how many men, how many males you have who are available to fight for you. So you're trying to assess how strong you are as an empire, and God says you're not supposed to do that because you are supposed to be um, reliant on God for your protection, not your own military power. So when David takes the census, that goes against God. But why does David take the census? Well, let's recap again. Chapter 21, the opening verse says, Satan stood against Israel and incited David to count the people of Israel. Okay. So David does something bad, but who's really to blame in this story here? Is it really David's fault? I mean, kind of. I mean, I don't want to give him a total pass on this. But was this David's idea? No, this wasn't David's idea. The reason why this happens is because Satan convinces or tempts or something along those lines, convinces David to do this evil thing. And so it's easy for us to kind of pass the buck, pass, pass the blame off on David here. Um, and so we still continue to make David look like a good guy out of all this. Okay. What's the big deal, Dr. Workman? Okay. Flip over. Flip all the way over to chapter 24. Uh, excuse me. Uh, flip over to 2 Samuel chapter 24. We find the parallel version of this story from 1 Chronicles. In this, in this version, things read a little bit differently. See if you can catch the difference here. 
2 Samuel chapter 24. Again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go count the people of Israel and Judah. Stop there for a second. I'm going to read it one more time. Pay close attention to why a census is being taken. Again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go count the people of Israel and Judah. Why does David take a census in this particular account? It's because God is angry. And so God encourages David or incites David to take a census so that God can punish the Israelites. Now, in both stories, a supernatural force is causing David to do something. But in the First Chronicles account, it's the evil supernatural force of Satan that is causing David to do this. And so, is it really David's fault? Kind of, not you know. We're, we're trying to we're trying to pass the blame on a little bit here. In Second Samuel, though, God's definitely involved in this and causes David to take the census. But the reason why this is is because God's already angry at the Israelites, probably because of something else that David had done wrong. Because this is in the middle of the this is in the middle of the bad David part of the uh, of the book of Second Samuel. So. What we see here is, in the former prophets, an attempt to really tone down the image of the great King David and show off that this guy's really not all that. Josiah is really the guy we need to get excited about. Remember Josiah? Um, but in First Chronicles, we're going to have a much more positive outlook on the monarchy in general, on David, on Solomon. Many of those negative stories that we talked about in the former prophets are missing. And so take a second to think about what's the value of doing that? Why do you want something? Why do you want to make something like that happen? Go ahead and pause the video, in fact, and, and, and genuinely think of an answer here. All right, hopefully you've actually attempted to think of an answer. Hopefully you've attempted to, to genuinely think through why this would happen. And I, I alluded to it at the beginning of this video, and we'll go ahead and say we'll go ahead and say it now. First Chronicles is really trying to build a foundation for a new nation. It is written after the end of the Babylonian and exile when the Israelites are desperately trying to survive and forge an identity. And when we think about our heroes in the United States, our founding fathers, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, as we've said before, we tell stories of the good things that we've done, and we tend to try to ignore the bad things that they've done. Because that helps us form our national identity. And so Americans are all about freedom, the Declaration of Independence, our founding father in George Washington as this statesman-like first president, um, Abraham Lincoln, who in the midst of a war has malice towards nobody. We ignore or downplay those negative things so that we can form our national character, our identity, as Americans. The Israelites are no different in this regard. They are trying to look back and create heroes for themselves out of David, out of Solomon, and stop telling those negative stories so that they can build an identity, build a character, and they can move forward from that. All right, let's call it a day here. Hope if, if you have not done the reading from Chronicles already, you really do need to do it, first of all, because you're going to be quizzed over it. Second of all, there's a couple of test questions that will appear or, uh, based on the readings. But I think that if you compare all the readings, or at least the sense of the readings from, for, from the former prophets to the Chronicles, 
I think you'll have a much better sense of how the Bible really is a collection of many different books that, that, that is speaking to different circumstances in different times, in different ways, um, and how God can speak to different people about kind of the same event, but in, but in some very different ways, um, depending on what God's purposes are at, at a certain moment in history. All right, uh, let's call it a day. I hope that you guys are all continuing to do well. Uh, I am, you can see I'm sort of out of spring break mode here, but maybe not 100% here. I'll be continuing to record lectures and uh, I'll continue to keep up with your, I'll continue to uh, communicate with you via email and uh, more updates to follow. Stay well and stay healthy, folks.